Electron orbitals are analogous to the energy levels that we see when we're discussing the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. Orbitals are more complex, though, and they represent an area in space where electrons are more likely to be found. And orbitals can be classified with a series of quantum numbers, n, l, and ml. The n values represent the shell that the electrons exist in, the l represents the subshell, and the ml represents the specific orbital that the electrons happen to be in. So n, the shell, corresponds to the size of the orbital and the energy of those electrons. The bigger the n value, the bigger the orbital and the more energetic the electrons. The value of L, which is the subshell, corresponds to the specific type of orbital that exists within a certain shell. And it can run from 0 to n minus 1 for each value of n. This means you can get a whole series of different subshell types. And the different values of L correspond to different types of subshells. 0 gets you an S-type S subshell, 1 gets you a P-type subshell, and 2 gets you a D-type subshell. And each of these types of subshells have different shapes. The S-type tend to be spherical, the P-types are dumbbell-shaped, and the D-types are harder to draw. The ML quantum number talks about specific orbitals within a subshell, within a shell. And it effectively corresponds to an orientation of each of the orbitals within a subshell. And it can run from minus L to plus L in steps of one. And this fact means that different subshell types will have different numbers of orbitals within them. And we'll do an example where we calculate a couple of different orbital combinations based on different quantum numbers. So for our first example, we'll look at an n equals 1, and we want to know what orbitals are possible with this specific quantum number. What we have to do is we have to decide what values of L and ML are possible with an n equals 1. So we know that n equals 1, and we can decide what values of L are possible. For each n value, you can have values of L ranging from 0 to n minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0, so you can have values of L ranging from 0 to 0 in steps of 1, which means for an n equals 1 shell, your subshell value is just going to be L equals 0. Now we have to decide what possible values of ML we have. ML is based on L. If ML is equal to minus L all the way to plus L in steps of 1, our L value is 0, so it can range from minus 0 to plus 0 in steps of 1. The only value of ML possible is 0. So our quantum numbers are N equals 1, L equals 0, and ML equals 0. We spoke earlier about how different values of L correspond to different subshell types. The L equals 0 subshell is called the S subshell. So we have a, an S type subshell, and there's only one possible orientation in space for that subshell according to our ML value, and that means we have a single orbital within the S subshell within the n equals 1 shell. And what we do is we label these things with a number that corresponds to the n value, and then we label it with the letter equivalent of the L value, in this case it's an S, and we label it further with a specific orientation that corresponds to the ML value. In this case, when only one value of ML is possible, we just leave this specific designation out. So we have a 1s subshell, and it can contain one orbital, so it contains a 1s orbital. And now we'll look at a slightly more complicated example. So now we'll look at an n equals 3 shell, and we'll see what types of orbitals are possible with that baseline n value. As in the previous example, what we do is we decide what values of L, what subshell types are possible within the n equals 3 shell. And again, L runs from 0 to n minus 1. n minus 1 is 2, so L runs from 0 to 2 in steps of 1, which means we have possible values of L equals 0, 1, and 2, which means we have S, P, and D subshells available to us and each of those will contain a different number of orbitals within them, and we'll have to work out all of those based on the ML values that are possible. So each value of L 
corresponds to a different number of ml values. Let's start with L equals zero. We know that ML equals zero for an L equals zero because we did that in our previous example. And for L equals one, we can have a range of values of ML. It can range from minus L to plus L in steps of one. So ML can be minus L, minus one, zero, or plus one. For L equals two, similar kind of situation exists where we can have ML ranging from minus L to plus L, which means we can have minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, and plus two. So each of these calculations we've done corresponds to a different set of orbitals within a subshell within a shell. They all belong to the n equals three shell. There are three different subshell possibilities, and there are a whole bunch of orbital possibilities. And again, we use our n value as the initial number in our orbital designation. So we have, for our first row here, a 3s orbital, just like we did in the previous example, but now our n is 3 rather than 1. For our second row, we have an L equals 1, so we have a p-type orbital. So we have 3p for our subshell, and we have three different values of ml, which means we have three different orientations. And s-type orbitals are spheres, p-type are dumbbell-shaped, and d-type are complicated. But if we have three different orientations possible for our p orbitals, those orbitals are oriented up and down, they are oriented side to side, and they are oriented into and out of the screen. So they're basically oriented along the three-dimensional axis system. And we have to have different designations for each one of those specific orbitals within the P subshell. So we have a 3P, a 3P, and a 3P. And just like the axis system we have, the three-dimensional coordinates, we label them as 3PX, 3PY, and 3PZ. And by a similar method, we work out the designations for our L equals two subshell orbitals, all five of our D-type orbitals. We have a 3D, 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 and 3D. Five different orbitals within the D subshell. And this doesn't correspond to a three-dimensional axis system anymore. It's a little bit more complicated and you don't actually need to uh, know them off by heart, but I'll give you the designations anyway. They are YZ, XZ, XY, X squared minus Y squared, and Z squared.